Okay, welcome to your lesson 2.5 um, video cast. This lesson we're going to be talking about using the distributive property to multiply. You can see that your essential question is how can you use the distributive property to multiply a two digit number by a one digit number? Um, I have some special guests here with me. My class is here and they're following along with me. So if you hear me ask them a question, um, just follow along with us. It says that the materials you're going to need are color pencils and grid paper. We are actually just going to use this grid paper provided right here and your pencil to shade. The distributive property states that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each addend by the number and then adding the products. A says outline a rectangle on the grid to model 6 times 13. Okay, So on the grid, and you can kind of look at this one down here as a guide, but right here on this grid, we're going to do six boxes down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to do 13 boxes over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen boxes over. And then we're just going to close that rectangle. So go ahead and do that. You're making a six by thirteen rectangle, basically. When you're done, it should look like that. You can do it anywhere on that grid paper. It's fine. The reason that we made this um, array is because we are going to we're going to then break this down using the distributive property. We're going to break down this amount of cubes into a smaller amount. Okay. So we're going to think of the number thirteen as five plus eight. Is 5 plus 8 13, class? Yes. Yes. yes, it is. So we're going to break apart this model to show that 5 plus 8 times 6 is our answer. Okay, so let's actually just do... Okay, so our 5 plus 8 is going to be represented up here on this top line. So we're going to count across 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and go ahead and draw a line straight down for me. And then that's going to leave us with our other 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 5 and 8 for a total of how much, class? 13. Good. 13. So we're breaking that number 13 into two different parts, 5 and 8. And then we're multiplying it by what number right here, class? Uh, three. 6. 6. Good. It says use the distributive property. F find the product of each smaller rectangle represents. Then find the sum of the products. Okay, so let's just first look at this rectangle right here. What two numbers are we multiplying together in this rectangle right here? Just this one. Five. Steve? Six and, five. six and five. So we're going to put six times five is equal to what? 30. 30. Okay. So right down here. Then this rectangle is representing what? Britta? 8 times 6. 6 times 8, or 8 times 6 is the same thing, right? 6 times 8 is? 48. 48. And then notice that right here, they gave us the equation outline, but it's an addition. So what two numbers do you think we're going to add together to find our product here? Emma? Um, 30. Awesome. 30 plus 48. Okay. And 30 plus 48 is what? Kaden? 78. 78. So we now know that if we come back up here, 6 times 13 is what? 78. 78. We did the same exact problem. We just broke down 13. We broke this 13 down into 5 times 8, or 5 plus 8, sorry. Sorry, 5 plus 8, not 5 times 8. Okay, down here on C, it says model 6 times 13 again. Think of 13 as a different sum. Okay, we paused for a second. I asked my class if they had any questions. One of the questions was, what is, where did you get the 5 and the 8? Okay, we basically just broke the number 13 down. What two numbers added together could equal 13? Okay, 
For this one, let's think of another way to make 13. Who can think of another way to make 13? Camden? Uh, 10 plus 3. 10 plus 3. Okay, let's use that. 10 plus 3. Okay, so Camden gave us the idea to do 10 plus 3, and that's actually the first thing that came to my mind, too. So we're going to do it. 10 plus 3. Okay, so over here on this array, we're going to make a 6 by 13 array. So 6 down, 13 over. And I've already made mine, so I'll give you a second to make yours. Wait, I'm slow at this. Okay. So you're going six down, 13 over. Okay. Who can tell me what our first box is going to be, Emma? Ten. Or, no, three. Yes, we're going to go over three, one, two, three. And we're going to break this huge array down into three and, what's our next one? Ten. Ten. So just like I'm going to draw a big bracket up here that tells us that 3 plus 10 is 13. Okay. Now, just look at this array right here. What does that array equal? And we're going to put that down here in this equation. Nevaeh? Um, it equals 9. Okay. That's, oh, wait. no. You mean multiply? Yeah. What, a, what two numbers oh, multiply equals, together? Okay, but what two numbers did you multiply together to get that? Three, I mean, yeah, three times six. Yes, six times three is 18. So we know that this one has 18. Who can tell me what this big, the bigger side rectangle, what two numbers are we going to multiply together, Dylan? Six times 10. Six times 10, and that's going to equal what? 60. 60. Now what two numbers are we going to add together to see how much... 6 times 13 is? What two numbers are we going to add together, Brody? Uh, you're going to add 18 and 60. 18 and 60. And 18 plus 60 is what, class? 68. 68. 78. 78. 78. Okay. Because it's the same number as the last one. Okay. Notice how it's the same exact number. So we got 78 here, 78 here. Okay, we broke it apart two different ways. Here we broke we broke 13 into 5 and 8, and here we broke it into 3 and 10. Either way, we got the same answer, 78. Okay. Okay, if you turn the page on page 88, it says explain how you found the total number of squares in each model in steps B and C. Okay, so in steps B and C, the first one, you're going to say, I divided the first model into a 6 by 5 rectangle and a 6 by 8 rectangle. Okay. I divided the first model into a 6 by 8 rectangle. Oh, sorry, 6 by 5 rectangle. We'll check. and a 6 by 8 rectangle. Okay. And then I added the sum of both, the, both of those. So the sum of 6 times 5 is what class? Six. 30. 30. And the sum of 6 times 8 is? 48. Okay. So then I added 30 plus 48, which is equal to 78. And number two is talking exactly about what we already talked about. Okay. Remember when I um, talked about how, oh, the bottom answer is the exact same as the top answer. Okay, that's because we just broke it apart in two different ways. So I'm actually going to skip responding to that one because we're running out of time. Okay, so you get a freebie on number two, but just remember that that's comparing the way that we came up with the same answer. We just broke it apart in two different ways. Okay. Okay, so number three, 
It says to find 7 times 23. You know to use distributive property, you're going to break apart either 7 or 23. Okay. Well, we're going to break apart 23, right? Because that's yeah. a bigger number. Okay. Basically, this is asking, is it smarter to do 20 plus 3 or 5 plus 8? What do you guys think? Plus I'm breaking three. apart 23. I think Which one's smarter, 20 plus 3 or 5 plus 8? Dylan? 20 plus 3. Why? Because it's easier, because we know how to multiply by tens, don't we? Yeah. 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 So that makes more sense. So I'm just going to put 20 plus 3. Because I can use mental math, mental math to multiply. Because 20 plus 3 is what? 23. 23. Okay, so then you're going to use that mental math to multiply, and we've talked about that a lot. Okay, down here, make connections. Another way to model the problem is to use base 10 blocks to show 10s and 1s. Okay, so here we have base 10 blocks to model 6 times 13. We have 6 rows of 1, okay, and 6 rows of 1, 10, and 3, 1. So 1, 10, 3, 1s, 1, 10, 3, 1, one 6 times. Okay, break apart this model into tens and ones. Six times one ten would be six times ten, and six times ten is what class? 60. 60. Six times three ones would be six times three, and six times three is what class? 18. Okay, so then you would take 60 plus 18 and get what? 78. 78 again. There's a, once again, another way to model this problem. So 6 times 3, 6 times 13 is 78. Okay. In step 2, the model is broken into two parts. Each part shows a partial product. The products are 60 and 18. So you can come back up here and see that the partial products are 60 and 18. Okay, that concludes the share and show. You're going to go on your own and you're going to do numbers 1 through 5. Oh, I'm sorry. N numbers 1 through 8. You really want to focus on getting number two and five done. So you might start with number two and five and then do the rest because two and five are going to determine your groups. Okay, thanks for helping me, guys.